The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. Our devotion title is A Rumble Among the Humble. That's a catchy little title, isn't it? A Rumble Among the Humble. You hear the thunderstorms coming. You can hear a lot of rumble among the humble. A rumble makes you humble. We are brought up to think when it starts thundering and lightning, you better get still somewhere and be quiet. That's the Lord's work. And even when we didn't go to church, boy, you got somewhere and you got still. Is that just me or does anybody else do that too? Y'all brought up to do the same way. Yes. Yes. You better be quiet. You better be quiet. (laughs) Absolutely. be quiet. I hear another rumble among the humble. Seems like that the world is in worse shape now than we've ever seen it. Economically, politically, socially, spiritually, and all those other leads you can put in there. Seems like things are getting worse on the horizon. We've never seen the uncertainty, the unsureness. We've never seen the violence on the increase, the killings, the murders, and the rapes, and the robberies. They've probably always been there. You hear about a little something every once in a while. But not like it is now. All the time it seems like there's something going on. And every time you pick up your newspaper and every time you turn on your television, every time you look at the internet, every time you get on the smartphone or the droid device or the eye device or whatever it is, you always seem to find some bad news. It's not too much good news. But I hear a rumble among the humble. The Bible tells us that we are to humble ourselves in the sight of God and that He would lift us up. The Scripture tells us that if my people People who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and will turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. I hear a rumble among the humble. It's not going to be the way it is now always because things are getting better. People are becoming sick and tired of the status quo and the way that things have just always been. And it's always been this way, but it's getting worse. And people are getting tired of the way things are. And sometimes you say, well, what can we do about it? Well, we can start rumbling among the humble. Seems like that we're humble. Nobody's paying us much attention. Seems like we don't have the big name. We don't have the class. We don't have the money that a lot of people have. But we're among the remnant. We're among the humble. And there's a rumble among the humble. In Isaiah chapter 57, the last part of verse 13 through verse 15, But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. It might seem like I don't have anything now. It might seem like I have just a cottage now. But we are going to have a mansion. Matter of fact, we've already got a mansion. We just hadn't moved into it yet. The Scripture tells us that if we humble ourselves before God, if we trust in the Lord, we put our trust in the Lord, that we will possess the land. Not just Israel. Israel will have their land. Nobody can take their land away from them. Nobody can do anything about it. God gave them that land and they will inherit that land. But you and I have promise of inheriting more than a land. We're not looking for an earthly land. We're looking for a heavenly home. And we have the promise of inheriting my holy mountain, says God. We have that wonderful place that we're going to. The Bible talks about it. It tells us that the streets are paved with pure gold. The walls are jasper. The gates of pearl. Most of all, Jesus and our loved ones are there. And that's a wonderful place that we're going to. They will inherit my holy mountain and shall say, Cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way. Take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and holy one, lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart 
of the contrite ones. This is the one who God is paying attention to. Those who are humble before God. Those who are contrite. That means that you are of a broken spirit. That you have a humble heart with God. The Scripture tells us that if we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, that all these things will be added to us. It tells us that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The Scripture here that we read says, cast up. And it doesn't just say it one time. It says it two times. Cast up. Cast ye up. That means to raise up like a heap. You're raising up a heap. It's not that you're just laying down and letting everybody run over you. It's time to raise up a heap. I don't mean raise a stink. I don't mean go out in the streets and march. People are doing that. You know why they're doing it? They're doing it just to be seen on television. They're doing it just to cause trouble. They're not doing it to really because they care about America, because they care about the nations of the world. They're not doing it just because they're getting rights. They're doing it just for publicity. They're doing it to cause trouble. That's not what the Scripture says do. It says, cast ye up. Cast ye up. Get things ready. Prepare the way. Take the stumbling block out of the way of my people. That says to get rid of things that hinder. There are things in our life the devil, the enemy, tries to bring against us. Sometimes people in this world try to bring things against us. It may be a habit. It may be gossip. It may be disappointment. It might be things in our life. Some things we cannot control. But there are some things that we can control. And the Scripture tells us that we need to get rid of those things that hinder us. Get rid of those things that come against us and try to keep us down and try to keep us out of heaven. Try to keep us where we're so down in the dumps that we don't feel the victory, that we don't know the Spirit of God and we cannot get a blessing from the Word of God because we've been beat so down so long and the enemy has been victorious over us. But we don't have to let the enemy have the victory over us anymore. All we have to do is to rise up. It says, cast ye up. Cast ye up. Raise up a heap. Get on top of a holy heap, if you will, and praise God. Prepare the way. Take the stumbling block out of the way of God's people. Get rid of those things that would hinder you from serving God. Get rid of those things that would hinder you from getting a blessing from God. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. We're talking about a God that's way up high, but he can see way down low. He's a God that's high, but He's not so big that He can't get in your heart. The high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. We're not worshiping a statue. We're not worshiping just a liberty bell. We're not worshiping a piece of cloth or a piece of art. We're worshiping the God who inhabits eternity. The only true and living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God that I'm talking about. His name is Jehovah. His name is mighty. His name is holy. He's the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. Whose name is holy. His name is holy. His very character is holy. That's who He is. I dwell in the high and holy place. And that's God. God is so big, heaven cannot hold Him. God is so holy that He cannot look on sin with pleasure. God is so mighty that you can't touch Him. But yet, He said, I am holy. I'm the one who is high, and I dwell in the holy place. But I also dwell with Him who is of a contrite and humble spirit. God is great. God is good. God is high. God is holy. He's mighty. He's majestic. But He also is such a wonderful, small, still voice. He's a God that's so big that the universe, the heaven cannot contain Him. But He's so small that He can speak to your heart, that He can dwell in your spirit. He said, I am high and holy. I dwell in the holy place. But I also dwell with him that is of an humble spirit. Those that are of a contrite heart and humble spirit. The scripture tells us a 
contrite spirit, an humble heart and a contrite spirit, O God, thou wilt not despise. God loves a humble spirit. Because an humble spirit is something that God can work with. If we have a proud and a haughty spirit, we know it all, nobody can tell us anything, God can't tell us anything, He cannot work with us. We're not supple, we're not pliable in His hands like the potter and the clay. The potter can take the clay and mold it and make it. But if the clay is like that old mountain clay, then got hard and rigid. You can't do anything with it. You've got to break it or throw it away or get you another lump. God doesn't want to get another lump. He wants to use us and He wants to mold us and make us. He dwells with us of an humble spirit. Get rid of that which is keeping us from serving God. And also be mindful of God's holiness. The humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. God wants to bless us. He wants to revive us. He wants us to know that there is hope. He wants us to know that He has good things in store for us. The best is yet to come for the child of God. So we need to get rid of those things that hinder us and weigh us down. The Hebrews chapter 12 talks about it. Lay aside every sin, the weight, and the sin that does so easily beset us and weigh us down. We're to lay it aside because it will keep us from serving God like He wants us to do. And then He wants us to give heed to God's holiness. God is a holy God. There was a time in our nation where people who didn't even go to church, people who never went to church, but they had more fear and respect of God and His holiness than many church people have today. That's how our world has changed. God's holiness. We dare not spurn the holiness of God. We dare not blaspheme and go against the holiness of God. We're to give heed to His his holiness before God is anything he is a holy God he said I'm high and holy I dwell in the high and holy place I'm so God I'm so holy I'm so majestic that I am the one who inhabits eternity I dwell in the holy place when they built that tabernacle and when Solomon built the temple they had a holy of holies place and it was a place where the ark of God was kept in the veil covered it up. You dare not touch it. You dare not go in there. The priest couldn't even go in there but once a year. And if he did, he had to have incense burning. And he had to have the blood that he would apply to the horns of the altar once in a year. And you dare not trifle around with the holiness of God. And people are going to have to answer today because the holiness of God is being trifled with and sinned against. But I hear a rumble among the humble. I hear a rumble among the humble. Those who are loving God. Those who are serving God. You don't hear much from them. Washington doesn't talk about it. You don't hear about it in the newspaper. You don't hear about it on the television or on the internet. But God has His people. Elijah thought he was the only one serving God. And God told him, son, you don't know nothing. I, it's a double negative, but it's still true. You don't know anything. I have me 7,000 people in Israel who have not bowed the knee to Baal or have kissed his feet. God still has a remnant today. He still has the number ones today. He still has those today who He said they're humble. Nobody talks about them much. The church doesn't even pay too much attention to many of them. But God has His people. Those who are humble before Him. Those who are still serving God. Those who are still giving heed to God's holiness. And that's what God tells us to do. Get rid of those things which keep us from serving God. Give heed to His holiness and then get ready for His deliverance and heavenliness. He said, I will revive the hearts of those who are humble. I will revive the spirit of the humble and the heart of the contrite ones. I will be near them. God is not near those who are proud. The Scripture tells us He's far off from those who are proud, the evildoers. But He's near those that are of a broken heart. That doesn't mean, and it does mean that when we have things that break our heart, but that's not all it means. It doesn't mean that you have to have somebody to die, somebody to have a bad disease or something really bad to happen to break your heart. That's not what all breaks our heart. 
That certainly breaks our heart. But what he's talking about is the condition of our country. That that breaks our heart. When people are going against God and they're going against things and you say, you know that they know that's not right. You know they know that's not right. And it's like the devil's got a hold of them. It's like evil powers of hell has got a hold of them. And you know that they know that's not right. People deny God, but you know they know there's a God. People deny man and woman, male and female, but you know that people know what it is. All you got to do is get by yourself and undress yourself. God gives you sense enough to know who you are and what you are. People know. They're just flaunting their self in the face of God. And it breaks our heart. But I hear a rumble among the humble because there are people who still love God. There are people who still serve God. There are people who still want to please God. We're to get ready for His deliverance and heavenliness. As we prepare our hearts for the presence of God, stand in all of His righteousness and holiness, and humble ourselves in faith and expectation, the mountains in our life will begin to quake and the stormy seas will rumble. The strongholds will come down and the yokes of bondage will be broken. Our spirit, which is sad and sorrowful, will soar like the eagle and our hearts will be healed and revived. God promises good things for us. He promises good things for His people. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Keep on believing in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go, I'll come again and receive you unto Myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I'll come and get you. He has given us the promise. And all we have to do Keep on being humble. Keep on rumbling. We don't have to lay down and play dead. Stand up for what's right. God doesn't call us to fight. We have to fight for the faith. Contend for the faith. We don't have to get out in the streets and loot and fight. That's not what God's called us to do. God calls us to be people of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We can do more making peace. We can do more on our knees than a thousand troops can do in the streets. God has called on us to be humble. Humbleness before God. He didn't say, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, my people will rise up and cause a riot, I'll fix things. That's not what He said. He said if we humble ourselves, pray, seek His face, He would hear from heaven. Forgive our sin. Heal our land. We must turn from our wicked ways. That's what people are neglecting to do today. They don't want to turn from their wicked ways. They like their life. They like their lifestyle. But you can bear me witness. You get to a place in your life that you don't like your life. You appreciate life from God. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you don't like your life the way you're living. You don't want to keep on living the way you're living. You want to be saved. You want Jesus to come into your heart. You get to the place where you humble yourself before God. And then God can do something with us. A rumble among the humble. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 